this video serves as an introduction to uh, bacteriology right so in this video we are going to talk about uh, the basic structure of the bacterial cell we will talk about uh, the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria we will also uh, discuss the functions of different uh, virulence factors and we will conclude by having an overview of a gram positive uh, bacteria right so uh, let's get into it right so this is the uh, basic uh, structure of the bacteria all right so i'm going to uh, label uh, different structures here for example let's start this is the cytoplasm right uh, next here here you can see the bacterial chromosome right so uh this blue dots are actually ribosomes uh right what you are seeing here is actually a granule and here you can see extra genetic material this is called uh, a plasmid right so uh these are just the basic features we are not going to talk more about them in this video right so what i'm going to label next is uh is very important right so firstly here you can see the cytoplasmic membrane right the first layer here is the cytoplasmic membrane uh followed by the cell wall this is the cell wall right and the outermost one is uh, a capsule right and not all of the bacteria contains the uh, the capsule i uh, will talk about them right and here you can also see uh, the flagella right uh, for motility uh, and here you can see the 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 pillows right so this pillows is actually uh, either for uh, uh, reproduction like exchanging genetic material and also uh, attaching to uh, mucosa right so here uh, let's get into uh, detail right so here what you are seeing here are the structures of the cell wall here on the left is a gram positive bacteria and on the right is gram negative bacteria right so what you are seeing here is like uh, all right this is a zoomed um, a zoomed view right so you can see like on gram positive bacteria there are two layers you can see the first one is the cell membrane and the second one is actually a peptidoglycan layer right and if you check on the right this one is a gram negative a bacteria uh, so you can see there are three layers number one is a cell membrane and number two you have a peptidoglycan and number three is actually uh, the outer membrane right so what i want you to note is that uh firstly i will talk about the thickness of a peptidoglycan right so you can see on a gram positive bacteria there is a thick peptidoglycan layer right uh, as compared to the thin one on the gram negative bacteria all right the second thing i want you uh, to note is the periplasmic space right so this is the space you are seeing it is two parts here and here the upper part and lower part right so uh, it's found between the what the outer membrane and the cytoplasmic membrane right okay uh then the other thing which i want you to note uh, is uh actually the what the tachoic acid or lipotachoic acid these are specific for a gram positive bacteria so this will be your buzzer with if you hear about a tachoic acid or lipotachoic acid just to remember uh, the gram positive bacteria right and for the gram negatives you need to remember lipopolysaccharides right lipopolysaccharides right then uh here i want to just have an overview of the structure which i just mentioned all the structures which i just mentioned right so we are uh, beginning with the, with the cytoplasmic membrane right so uh, on chemical composition it's made up of phospholipid uh, bilayer sac with embedded proteins um, so this function is uh, the site for oxidative and transport enzymes right then 
lipotaicoic acid i said it in gram positive uh, bacteria right so it only extend uh, from the membrane to the exterior right and the function of the lipotaicoic acid is to induce uh, tumor necrosis alpha and uh, interleukin 1 right uh, so we will talk about uh, these in in the next videos right the other thing which you find on the cytoplasmic membrane is a penicillin binding proteins, right? So these are for cell wall synthesis. The second structure which we are going to talk about is the cell wall, right? So on chemical composition, the cell wall is actually made of a peptidoglycan, right? So peptidoglycan is actually a sugar backbone uh, with peptide side chains cross-linked by a specific enzymes called transpeptidases, right? So what's the function of this cell wall? It gives a rigid support and protects the bacteria against osmotic uh, pressure damage, right? The next structure is a periplasm, right? And this one is actually a space uh, between cytoplasmic membrane and the outer membrane, right? I showed you this, right? So the function is uh, that it accumulates components exiting from gram-negative cells. And remember, it's only found in gram-negative uh, uh, bacteria. And those components also include uh, hydrolytic enzymes, Right. The next structure is outer membrane. Right. So it has three layers. The outer leaflet contain endotoxin. Then uh, there's also uh, uh, embedded proteins. Right. So these are actually porins. And the inner leaflets, uh, it contain the phospholipids. Right. So on function, the endotoxin is actually a lipid A, which induces a tumor necrosis alpha and uh, interleukin 1. Right. The porins are for transport across the membrane. Uh, and also, we will find uh, outer membrane proteins. Right. So most of the outer membrane proteins or OMPs are antigenic. Right. It means they, are, they have the ability to induce immune reaction right then the other structure is biofilm right so biofilm is actually a loose network of polysaccharides right uh, and the function is mediation of adherence to surfaces for example in indwelling catheters and as you are going to see in the next videos uh, this biofilm can also uh, prevent the penetration of a uh, antibiotics into uh, where the the bacteria are actually located right right uh, the next structure is a capsule the capsules are usually made of polysaccharides right but in other bacteria for example specifically in bacillus anthracis uh, the capsule is made up of uh, amino acid residues or simply a protein right uh, the function is to protect the bacteria against phagocytosis right uh, moving on i have three other structures and we will review okay so the first one is flagellum uh, chemical composition is made up of proteins right and this next point is very important the flagellum is affixed to the bacteria by a basal body right so you can uh, this basal body can be a basal word for you, like in the question, if you hear something like basal body, just to know they're talking about the flagellum and the function is simply motility. Then uh, we have fimb fimbria or pili. So the chemical composition of pili is actually a glycoprotein uh, and for function, it mediates adherence to uh, of the bacteria to cell surfaces or mucosa, right? And I say the other function, uh, for example, you have a sex pili, right? So it's for uh, reproduction, right? So uh, our last structure here uh, is a spore, right? The chemical composition of uh, spores are, first, firstly, uh, they have a keratin-like coat. They have dipicalonic acid. 
peptidoglycan and the actual DNA, right? Uh, so these spores are found only in some gram-positive bacteria, and they are resistant to dehydration, heat, and chemicals, right? So here is uh, an overview of gram-positive bacteria, right? So gram-positive bacteria, are uh, like they, they stain blue or purple, right? So in the next videos, we will see that in gram-positive bacteria, we will be using the blue background, right? So in terms of shape, the gram-positive bacteria can be grouped into three. Bacilli, which are rod-like. Cocci which are uh, like spheres or circles and branching filaments, right? So let's start with, with bacilli. Bacilli can be grouped into aerobic and anaerobic. On aerobic, on all aerobes, you have Listeria monocytogenes, you have Bacillus anthracis and Corinibacterium diphtheria, right? On Anaerobes, we will only talk about Clostridium species. On branching filaments, they can also be grouped into aerobes and anaerobes, right? On aerobes, you have nocardia, right? So it's, it's weak acid first. Nocardia is weak acid first. And we have, uh, on anaerobes, there is actinomyces, right? And the, this one is not acid first, right? So it's another different uh, when compared to nocardia, right? Uh, we will talk about this in great detail, right? Here, I just want to give you an orientation of what is waiting you in the near future, right? Uh, the main group, the cocci, right? Or, or, or cocci, okay? So the cocci can be differentiated uh, in terms of... Uh, presence or absence of the enzyme called catalase, right? So catalase positive uh, cocci are actually staphylococci, right? So these ones are arranged in clusters, right? Or like grapes like this, right? So staphylococcus species uh, can be further differentiated in terms of presence or absence of coagulase. Coagulase is this enzyme which is present in staph aureus but is absent in other staphylococcus species, uh, for example, Staphylococcus epidemides and Staphylococcus saprophyticus. To differentiate Staphylococcus epidemides and Staphylococcus uh, saprophyticus, we actually use novobiosin, right? So you will see that uh, Staphylococcus epidemides is novobiosin sensitive and staphylococcus saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant all right so that's all about um, the staphylococcus now the next group is streptococcus all right so streptococcus are actually uh, these bacteria are arranged in pairs or in chains and here you need to remember they are catalyst negative all right so they can be differentiated by hemolysis, right? So they can be grouped into three. You have alpha hemolysis. Alpha hemolysis is actually partial hemolysis, and they show a, a green a pigment. This is actually a decomposed hemoglobin. Beta hemolysis is actually a complete hemolysis. So around the, uh, the colonies, it will be clear. Gamma hemolysis is actually, here there is no hemolysis, right? But they just called it gamma hemolysis, right? And this species actually grows in bio, right? So let's start with the alpha, right? So on alpha hemolysis, we can uh, differentiate these bacteria in terms of uh, optokin sensitivity and biosolubility, right? So uh, optokin sensitive and biosoluble are actually strep pneumo, right? Streptococcus pneumonia, right? And it's actually encapsulated. The very dense streptococci, the, which is the other group, is actually, it doesn't have capsule and is optokin resistant and is bio 
insoluble, right? So it's insoluble in bio, right? So that's all about what um, alpha hemolysis, right? On beta hemolysis, here we have two, a group A and group B, right? Group A and group B. So group A is actually a streptococcus pyogenes and group B is a streptococcus agalacti, right? So to say group A, this, these groups were uh, actually the, the carbohydrates which were detected by uh, Rebecca Lensfield, right? So they use this kind of uh, carbohydrates to uh, differentiate uh, different streptococci, right? Right. So to differentiate uh, group A and group B, you need to know that group A is bacitracin sensitive and group B is bacitracin resistant and that's all right moving to on uh gamma hemolysis right and i said here there is no hemolysis i don't know why they called it gamma hemolysis right we have two we have enterococcus and non-enterococcus right non-enterococcus we have a uh, strep bovis right and on enterococcus you have enterococcus fessium and enterococcus fecalis right to differentiate these two, you need to know that this enterococcus actually it, it grows in 6.5% sodium chloride, right? And this one S bovis or streptococcus bovis, which is non-enterococcus, it doesn't, right? Yeah, and that's all. This is just an overview of uh, the gram-positive bacteria. In the next video, we are going to talk about uh, the staph oreos.